Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day and Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at the latest update for Space Engineers, this one introducing two new features as well as a number of bug fixes, and we're also going to take a look at the latest planetary teaser. Now the first thing I want to show you is you can see we've got gravity turned off. Now the ability to jump in different sorts of gravitational fields has been changed, so we'll hit this button and this will actually increase the gravity's acceleration. So we've got a gravity of 0 0.10, so you can see as we jump we've got a very sort of moon based gravity where we can do these massive large steps. Hopefully in the future they'll update the animation as well so it feels more sort of space jumping rather than falling from a great height. But we'll increase the acceleration to, to 0.020 and you can see the jump is a lot shorter. Well, not a lot shorter, it's only a little bit shorter. We'll increase it a lot so it's a very clear visible. So we'll put it to 060 and you can see how the jump has been incredibly like shortened by quite a bit, but this is just a really interesting feature, so different planets, I'm guessing, are going to have sort of different amounts of gravitational pull that will affect both the character and the ship, so some planets you won't want to bring a ship down because it will come crashing straight down, so if we increase the gravity on this generator to maximum, so uh, 1.0, obviously you could have more than that with more generators, or the planet itself just might have a, a massive gravitational weight, you can see the jump is very short and quick, so you're not going to want to land a ship on that sort of planet. But just really interesting. Let's have a look at the wheel feature. Now, the second thing I want to look at in this update was the changes to the wheels. Now, the wheel change is quite drastic. Before, building a car of any type was quite dodgy. The wheels would bounce uncontrollably, but now it seems like the car has a lot better grip with on the surface. And I'm testing this out on a voxel-based terrain because I guess it's intended for planets in the future. And you can see that the car is handling far better. It's turning as I want it to turn, and it's moving backwards and forth. And you can see if I hit the brakes, it'll slow down and it'll reverse. I can even turn and reverse the car quite sharply. And going off-road, obviously, is still quite a dangerous thing to do, but we can do it quite easily now as well. Now let's have a mess around with some of the controls and I'll show you some of the things that really affect the wheels now. So let's go to K, let's have a look at our wheels and what we're going to do is just change the ratio around. So we're going to put the power of the wheels up to an uncontrollable level, we're going to put the friction really low so it's going to be slipping and sliding, we've got the dampening up to maximum so that's our suspension and we've also got the strength up to maximum. So let's lower our strength, strength of the actual suspension here so as we go off road we should see it turn and move a little bit differently and you can see as we've got no friction how much our wheels are spinning and bouncing all over the place and we've just got no grip at all so we've, we've basically built ourselves a drift car so let's actually change that up again uh, wheel controls and let's actually add ourselves a little bit of friction so we're not all over the place and we'll turn the power a little bit down as well so we've got a bit more of a balanced sort of car and you can really adjust the car now to such a level where it's really controllable and it's not going to be slipping all over the place you can make turns with ease and now I've adjusted the suspension as well you'll be able to see it move over the terrain a little bit easier than it did before when it was really stiff and really tight it wasn't able to adapt over the different surfaces as well but now it is so we can just bounce over the top of it but I have put it a little bit weak so we are getting stuck on a more hull down so let's adjust the suspension once again so we'll grab that and select all that so we need to turn the dampening and the strength let's turn the strength back up you can see how the wheels are coming off the ground we're going to adjust it to about there so we've got enough dampening and let's adjust the dampening as well so strength so now we should have a vehicle that is a bit more suitable you can see the suspension on the wheels is going up and down on the actual wheel block itself as we go over the different amounts of terrain so you can really adapt your car and the wheels a lot further now than you could before you can see how i've turned the dampening down and we've got a car in the middle so we can do a little bit of adjustment and fix that up. Now we're taking a look at the update, let's take a look at the planetary teaser trailer that was released. Now this one heavily focused on what looked to be a moon-like planet. It was considerably smaller than the planet it was next to. As you can see, as the ship goes in, you can just see the scale there. But the size of this moon is still colossal. It's extremely massive. The ship managed to find a small, safe crater to land and establish an outpost, and it really got me thinking about how large these planets are and how large the actual systems are going to be. And this one little moon outpost could establish hundreds of little spots across this asteroid, across the moon's actual surface. And then I thought even more, could this moon affect a planet? But anyway, I'd love to hear what your thoughts and what you're expecting from planets. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.